Okay, so as you can probably tell, this is not a video that I was planning on doing. It's not a scheduled one. Uh, I just got a box in the mail from Aragon, and it was one that I was expecting. I got a message from Wing, the founder. He asked if I wanted to review one of their watches. I told him I did, but I couldn't because I don't have time. And he was super cool about it. He offered to send in a watch purely for free, even though I wasn't going to make a video. So I thought, great, um, that's wonderful. You know, I, and I didn't tell him I would do anything, but I figured, yeah, I, at least I could do like an unboxing real quick and show you guys what he sent over. Um, but I opened the box up and he actually sent two watches. And when I took a sneak peek inside to see what they were, um, I knew I had to do a little bit longer video because both of these have some really interesting loom on them and they're really cool watches. So this is gonna be a quick, yeah, kind of a mini review, but uh, yeah, let's, let's flip around and see what we got. Okay, so Wing sent me two watches. He sent me the Regeneron and the Dive Master 4 Evo. And both of these have a really interesting glow-in-the-dark loom application. I'm gonna do full J-score measurement on these, uh, compare them, and it's gonna be fun because the Regeneron features tritium tubes and a lot of them. You're getting tritium on all of the markers, tritium on the hands, and then kind of a cool tritium-shaped 12 o'clock and six o'clock Arabic. And tritium is fun. I always love taking a look at tritium watches, but what really got me excited was looking at the Dive Master Evo 4 because this one has LumiCast on it. So if you look at the markers on the dial, you can see that they are little 3D shaped blocks or cylinders. So LumiCast is where they take, I believe, a ceramic material and infuse it with loom. So these are little blocks that have been produced and the entire thing glows in the dark. It's supposed to be a more efficient and brighter way to take Superluminova. So rather than painting it onto the dial, you infuse it into these little blocks and then glue the blocks onto the dial. So I was really curious to see how these are going to perform after dark. But before we jump into the loom testing, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about these watches. Now, I think both of these really kind of highlight what I like about Argon, and that is that they have really bold, fun designs. You know, a lot of times they're kind of outside my comfort zone. I usually go for their tamer ones in bright colors, so this Argon uh, Dive Master Evo is really right up my alley. I love the yellow on this. I think they've done a great job, and one thing that Wing, their main designer, does is he does a, a really amazing job of picking uh, good cool colors for a lot of their divers. So you get a lot of unusual colors. You get your standard uh, blues and yellows and oranges, but there's also purples and really interesting greens and teals and reds. Uh, lots of cool colors that he picks. I'm really happy he sent this yellow one over. And I, I think he did, just did a great job with the colors on it. Uh, I love the black hands, the black outlines around everything. Great job there. On the other hand, you have something really aggressive, stylized with a skeletonized uh, watch. This one's called the Regeneron. Uh, this is typically, again, not quite my style, but I love looking at things like this. This one is using the Seiko NH70 movement. So it's my first time seeing this movement. Um, I believe that's just kind of a no-date skeletonized version of the NH35. So you can see the silver underneath is the skeletonized movement, and then on top of it is a skeletonized dial that has some kind of cool industrial looking cutaways. And that is matched by this bracelet that has this kind of really kind of cool texture going down the middle. Whole thing's IP coated black with a stainless steel bezel and loom filled bezel insert. Both of these have some really competitive pricing. The Regeneron I believe is available for $219. Again, with you know full tritium on the dial. So really a uh, good price for that. And then the Evo here, I believe is $169. This one comes with a ceramic bezel and sapphire crystal and the LumaCast uh, full stainless steel watch. So really great price for that one. Uh, this one does have a mineral crystal, the Regeneron. So yeah, I would have liked to have seen sapphire, but still 219 for full tritium is a pretty good deal. Let's go ahead and get the dimensions on these guys. I'll try them on wrist real quick, talk a little bit about the design and just what I like and don't like about it, and then we'll move on to looking at the loom. So starting with this one, uh, design-wise, this is the one I really liked the most. It's pretty simple, safe design, but really large watch. This one, they, they build this one as 43 millimeters, which is the diameter of the case. So you can see the case is actually smaller than the bezel. So the case is a 43 millimeter case. Inside, you're getting a Seiko NH35 automatic movement. But because the case is smaller than the bezel, it wears like a 43 millimeter watch. It looks like a 48 millimeter watch because that's about the diameter of the bezel. You're also getting 22 millimeter lug openings and right about 50 millimeters lug to lug. On my seven and a half inch wrist, I can totally get away with that size. It looks, I think, pretty good. Definitely a lot of wrist presence. Definitely more than I typically go for. You know, I, I would, you know, more 
usually prefer around a 42 millimeter. Uh, but yeah, it's fun to bust out a big watch like this every once in a while. A very solid feeling watch, nice four o'clock crown. An interesting thing on this one, I think, is that ceramic bezel with the loom-filled markers. Uh, the numbers are very large on the bezel, so there's a lot of room to fill them up with loom. Really has a lot of visual impact on the look of the watch, and I think the colors really contrast well with the yellow, with the black bezel, the black outline around all the markers, the black hands. Great work there. One thing I don't like about this one, though, is the hands. I feel like they're a little bit short, especially the second hand. I would have liked to see that arrow a little bit larger and also the whole arrow a little bit longer. And then the hour hand feels a little bit stubby. The minute hand's great. Nice, large, bold minute hand. But yeah, the hour hand and the second hand both feel a little bit undersized to me for this size of a watch. This one is also 14 millimeters tall, so not too bad for a watch of this size. Again, 200 meters of water resistance, screw down crown, sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel, Seiko NH35 automatic, and that LumiCast uh, marker is very unique um, and just a really competitive price for all the kind of stuff they're offering you there. You're also getting really great bezel action on this one. I love the bezel feel on this. A really smooth, just nice little 120 clicks. Uh, one of the best I've seen. No back play on here, just really solid, uh, yet really easy to turn. It's like just the perfect amount of resistance and just a really pleasant feel as you're turning the bezel around. Yeah, this is, this is kind of like my dream style bezel action. Uh, looking at the Regeneron, I've got the mics situated here, so let me go ahead and show the bezel action on this one. Uh, very different. You can hear it, it has a more hollow, tinny sound. Might be because this is a stainless steel bezel instead of ceramic, I don't know. Feels different too. Different grip, different toothing. Um, it's, it's solid, it's good. I don't like it as much. It's not as pleasant to use, and that yeah, kind of sound does feel a little bit hollow, a little bit tinny. Maybe not quite as nice. This one they pulled kind of the same trick. The case itself is about 41 millimeters, but the bezel is about 43, so it looks larger than it wears. And you're getting about 49 millimeters lug to lug, so fairly long on that. And this one, as you can see, it's a chunky guy. It's about 16 millimeters tall. Um, I don't think it needs to be that tall. I'm not sure. It could be because the uh, dial actually looks fairly substantial. You know, usually watch dials are very thin. This one's a pretty good hunk of metal. Looks like the dial, that cutout dial, is about a millimeter there. So that might attribute for, that might contribute to some of the added thickness on the watch. Um, but really cool to see the Seiko NH70 movement. That's the first time seeing that one. And that's another thing that I kind of like about Argon. They do use a lot of different movements, a lot of different Seiko movements, and they find some interesting ones that I haven't seen from any other micro brands. Now, overall build quality on both of these is good for the price. Uh, there, there are a few sharp edges on the clasps on both of these. However, the clasps do function very well, very smooth, no problems getting them open and closed. You know, flip up, double push button, so that's good to see. Solid end links on both of them, solid links. Uh, they're just push pins on the links. But yeah, they're, they're not the greatest bracelets, but they are really good bracelets for the amount of money that you're paying. I feel like the IP coating on this one uh, makes it feel a little bit uh, sticky in some movements. Sometimes it kind of gets stuck when you're rotating these. And I noticed similarly on this one, there's sometimes the links will get bent a little bit out of shape and you gotta add a little bit of force to get them back in, um, but overall not too bad. Okay, let's talk about the loom on these guys, and that's the thing that I was most excited about. The LumiCast didn't perform as well as I had hoped it would. It looks amazing. It's one of the coolest looking looms I've seen. Uh, seeing those 3D blocks light up and glowing just looks, yeah, so unique. Uh, but the brightness of those doesn't match the hands or the bezel. And it's about average brightness. It's actually not bad at all for, for most of the divers I've tested. Yeah, it's, it's about average. It's not gonna compete with Seiko's LumiBright, but it's decent usable loom on the dial. I was really impressed with the bezel though. The bezel and the hands are both incredibly bright, um, definitely competing well with Seiko in those regards. So you do get some really substantial after dark performance with that. As far as the Regeneron, this one is using tritium primarily on the dial and on the hands. And tritium is just an entirely different ball game. Rather than having a luminous paint that absorbs light and then emits it as the, 
Rather than having a luminous paint that absorbs light and then emits it after it gets dark, uh, you have these little glass vials in there that are filled with a radioactive gas, and then the underside of those vials are coated with a phosphorescent paint. The radioactivity from the gas excites the phosphorescent and it causes it to glow. So as long as that gas is inside those tubes, it will glow on its own. It doesn't need to be charged by anything. It will always glow at the same constant brightness. It's not quite true. So the tritium gas does decay. So actually over a period of years, I believe it has a 12 year half-life. So that means 12 years from now, this watch is going to be half as bright as it is now. So you're measuring the longevity of the loom in years rather than hours, which means that when we get to testing this, it's going to have a huge advantage over everything else out there in my collection. This is going to be fun because I haven't done a J-score on a tritium tube watch yet. J-score measures the brightness one hour after watch has been fully charged. And you know, your interesting thing that you're going to get here is that at fully charged, Superluminova Lumibright is typically going to be significantly brighter than tritium. Tritium doesn't look that impressive at first, especially compared to a fully charged Superluminova watch. However, an hour later, it completely destroys it. Once your eyes have adjusted to the dark, it gives exactly the right amount of brightness that you need. It's very easy to read. It's not distracting. And it just continues to glow at that brightness for years. Which means that after one hour doing the J-score, the Tritium scored a 40 which is more than double the highest powered watch that I've ever tested. Meanwhile, over on the Evo, it still performed admirably. Typically for my J-scores, I take an average of the brightness of the hands and the markers. And doing that, this one scored a 7. Seiko Samurai is a 10. So this is about 70% as bright as a Seiko Samurai when you're considering the hands and markers. However, the bezel is significantly brighter than, than the marker. So if you take the hands and the bezel and average those, you actually jump up to a 9, which just about puts it tied for the Seiko Samurai. So the hands and bezel performance is going to be really similar to what you get from Seiko on this watch. The Lumicast markers are a little bit dimmer but they look super cool. But going back to the size on these guys, again, at a seven and a half inch wrist, I can totally get away with this, but there are a lot of people who still like oversized watches. And I think that's the market that Argon is really targeting. They claim that they designed these watches to be wearable by people with smaller wrists. Uh, so even though they're large watches, uh, they have a good curvature to them. They do conform well. So if you have a smaller wrist, but you like the look of a large watch, this is definitely something to at least check out and give it a shot. And recently they have been coming out with some more conservative sizes on some of their models. So that's also something that you can check out. I think I recently reviewed their 40 or 42 millimeter uh, Dive Master 4. Got a review of that you can check out as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.